The current Bandmine Theatre in Tivoli Garden was built in 1874. Exposure to the bitter Danish winters had faded the colours over time, and in 1950 and again in 2001, the theatre was brightened up, repainted and restored to its former glory. Though perhaps not as popular as it once was, people still, much like myself, arrive a good half hour before the performance to get a seat. The Chinese characters above the proscenium are saying from Meng Zi, and they tell us that sharing with others brings happiness. And happiness is exactly what happens when that peacock spreads its tail and we're led into the world of Harlequin, Columbine, and Piero. Tonight's piece, Piero's Misfortune, first appeared on the stage of the Chinese theater in 1864. However, it was not a new piece to Denmark. The Casotti family had had it as part of their repertoire on many of their tours throughout the country. The story is, of course, a very traditional one. Arlequin comes a-courting. Cassander, aided, though not always abetted, by his servant Pierrot, looks the young man over, and, not impressed by his clothing, sends for his daughter. Columbine, of course, is immediately enchanted by the young man and declares her undying love, something that doesn't necessarily please her father. Having been refused the hand of his lady love, a despondent Eiloquin goes to the forest and threatens to take his life. Fortunately, a good fairy hears him and gives him a magic baton that will get him out of all sorts of fixes. Meanwhile, Cassandra has found the perfect suitor for his daughter, or at least in his eyes. He's rich, if a bit old and foppish. When introduced to him, though, Columbine will have nothing to do with him. This is not the man she wants to marry. The suitor decides he'll impress her by presenting her with some flowers. After all, what woman can resist flowers? Somehow or other, Pierrot, a fisherwoman, some fish, they all get mixed up in it. It gets really quite silly, quite slapstick, and quite funny. At the end, the good fairy blesses Harlequin, blesses Columbine, and reunites them the way that all lovers should be. And tradition dictates that every performance ends with the three Tivoli hurrahs. The tradition of the three cheers for Tivoli goes back to the 1880s, when during a performance of The Robbers, the Columbine came too close to a burning candle on the stage. In full view of the audience, the petticoat of her dress caught on fire. Pierrot, played by Niles Heinrich Wölkertsen, put out the fire as the curtain was going down. The spectators were concerned about what had happened and shouted out, Say something, Pierrot! Wölkertsen stepped in front of the curtain and told them that it was her burning love for me that burst into flames. Now let's give three cheers. Three cheers for Tivoli. Come on, come on. 